mama watching that happen must have been very hurtful mm -hmm. for her. And um, I really think that uh, my mom um, had a dream as well to be a star. And I think that's why she put it in us, mm -hmm. um, you know, a gospel singer, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and we never really got to a lot of promises, mom, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And, <laughs> you know, um, but that never came full circle either. And now my mom is uh, in a nursing home. OK. And so that's kind of sad to me that 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 didn't come full circle. So I just wish that um, it would all come full circle and that we, like I said earlier, come back together as a family. But Arisa, I'm nice Arisa, meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Um, and so, as we start off, I, you know, um, we have a global audience of, you know, everyone comes from everywhere, from America, the UK, um, Africa. They always like to know, you know, where you're sort of born and raised, so we can get a, a, a geography map as to where you're from. I was actually born in Detroit, Michigan. Um, left there when I was like. 12, 13 years old. So I claim Grand Rapids, Michigan as well. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so Detroit via Grand Rapids or Grand Rapids via Detroit. Um, <laughs> I, I was born back in the 50s. Say that. Wow. So, <laughs> during the time when you were growing up in Detroit, then was Motown the whole, you know, the, the temps and were they around or when yeah, you- Of course, um, the Supremes, the Martha Reese and the Vandelics, the Temptations, the Four Tops. Yeah, yeah. But um, we left Detroit when I was like 13 years old. By the time we were interested in getting into uh, the secular world, because coming <laughs> from the church, you know, um, Motown had left. Oh. They were in LA. Did, did, did you ever think that you've missed a chance when they moved out? Or what, what, what did that? No way. <laughs> okay. No way. Um, I can remember seeing the Jackson Five on the Ed Sullivan show. They're, you know, you yeah. coming out singing. And I said, that just inspired me. Um, me and my brother Bobby, who was in the group Switch. Yes, yeah. Uh, he said, we can do this. We can do this, you know. So I never thought, uh, you know, Motown not being there anymore was going to be, I didn't even know I was going to be with Motown. I just knew I was going to be a star. Wow. I'm going to be a star one day. <laughs> but uh, when we got out there, Motown was there. Then it was like, hey, you know, yeah, yeah. let's go with Motown. Yeah, you know, you started off by saying, the secular world, uh, and I take it that um, um, your faith and and growing up within the the gospel scene was really something that really was important for the, for you and and your and your family. Of course, yeah. Um, raised in church, and um, we didn't listen to secular music. We weren't supposed to be listening to <laughs> secular music. Um, uh, so uh, we would sneak and listen to it. Um, we were raised in church. Mama, you know, started us as children singing. And um, I was first since I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest of the 10. Wow. And uh, L actually is the fifth. He's uh, the sixth, sixth child. Yeah. Oh. Um, he's like... Uh, the oldest of the next five. There's five of us, and then there's L, and then there's four behind him. You know? So I call him the oldest of the second five. You know, the first five paved the way <laughs> in everything. So me and Bobby are right next to each other, and um, we were raised in the church. I start singing Lord's Prayer in church, doing. They would uh, request for me to sing. My uncle was the preacher, so he would take me with him, and he had a little treat for. Um, 
the churches that he preached at. I've got my little niece with me today. And I was seeing only what you do for Christ will ask somebody bigger than you and I. And um, it was always said, okay, you guys, we don't want you to go to the secular world. No, you know, <laughs> the secular world was where devil music was. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> What was it like? I mean, I, you know, I'm 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 a, a, the oldest of three or four boys, um, okay. but we're all two years apart. I can't imagine what it would be like being the oldest of ten children. Um, what was that like being the first child and have nine siblings behind you? Oh boy, I never got to be a little girl. I will tell you that. Well, you know, a little child mm -hmm. um, had to move out the way because the first five of us aren't even a year apart. So. Um, and then it's like eight boys, me, eight boys, and then my sister, which I'm 15 years older than. Wow. So you kind of like, I kind of like took on a, uh, not just a big sister, but a mother thing as well. How, did, how hard was that then to be able to, you know, especially in, in, in those days to think, I've got to look after my siblings, support my mom with that but I still have this dream of being a star. I mean, is there a balance between trying to pursue that career, but then also supporting your mom with your siblings? Well, um, I had a very abusive childhood, okay? So I don't know. I have books out about it um, called The Capped Ones, mm -hmm. uh, three book series it's called The Capped Ones. I had a very abusive childhood. And um, I was raised in a biracial family. My father's white and my mother's black. So in back in those days, it wasn't seen like that, you know, where the father was black. And um, I'm sorry, the father was white and my mother being black. We didn't see any other children like us. So, and it was very strict back in those days. It was strict, you know, the, the parents were strict. Um, so uh, I wasn't really... I was more into the church, mm. so I wasn't really thinking, "Oh, I'm going to be a star." I, I didn't. I didn't think that until I saw like a Michael Jackson and then one <laughs> <laughs> on Ed Sullivan's show. Um, I just knew that, you know. I think in the beginning, we we didn't know that uh, uh, we had a gift of singing. You know, we thought everybody could sing. Um, and uh, as later on, when we went, we got into choirs and stuff. We we knew that we we uh everybody couldn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> everybody didn't know how to do harmonies and and all that stuff. So we kind of said, oh, okay, we're kind of special in that way. And um, so it was like uh, the first five of us had a little group. Then Mama would take us to the radio stations and um, to the different uh, young people's meetings at the different churches to sing. Um, me being the oldest of all that, um, I think it was good that I was a girl. If I was in the middle, I probably, because of eight boys, I probably would have been tomboyish. But I was able to, uh, you know, the age difference then was like that little bit of age uh, kept me a little ahead of them. <laughs> so I could blossom around, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but then... Um... Was it your mom's brother that was the pastor in Grand Rapids that she was staying with? Uh, when, in Grand Rapids, was that your uncle, your mom's brother, or cousin, or something? Yes. Okay. Yes, that was my mother's brother. I, I, was I, pastor. And was 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 he hoping to keep you guys, you know, singing within the church, within the gospel community? Yes. Was that the hope? Yes, yes. They were afraid for us to leave from the church that that would break us up as a family. Mm -hmm. which it did. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and uh, only what you do for Christ will last. And that was one of the songs that I was singing that followed me all my life, you know, mm -hmm. only what you do for Christ will last. Um, and then all the, the drama and the stuff that comes with being out um, in the music industry, they were afraid for us. Yeah. But uh, uh, whose idea was it to be able to say, let's come up with a group um, as opposed to going solo? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I mean, a secular group when we went to... <laughs> yeah, so yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, 
Bobby mm. was the one that um, was the first one to go out and sing, to do the little nightclubs, um, to uh, play him and Tommy. And uh, at first, Bobby wouldn't sing at all. Uh, he was teased as a, a young boy that he sounded like a girl. So he stopped singing, but he was still writing and, and uh, playing the piano. So he um, would have me sing the songs that he would write and I would sing the songs that I would write. So it was me, Bobby and Tommy at first, um, but I stayed in the church and Bobby and Tommy weren't really in the church at the time. <laughs> and so they ventured out to the different nightclubs in Grand Rapids. And from there, uh, Bobby, when he got 19, he went to California and was in a group called White Heat, which uh, was Barry White's band. Oh, okay. Now, he, if when he goes off, what's mom telling you guys on your uncle? Are they saying, look, stay back, don't go? <laughs> oh, don't of course. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want us to go. And we didn't really want to go. I think we were more into the church. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, we wanted to do uh, like Andre Crouch. Andre Crouch was a big, you know, mentor of ours. Oh. So we uh, we wanted to um, sing in the church. We wanted to sing gospel. So we did a demo. And um, this is what this is after Bobby and Tommy had left, and yeah. they were in California. Um, I was with my brothers, L, Randy, and Marty. And um, we were a group called God's Children of Harmony. <laughs> and we rehearsed every day in the basement. And um, that's where we learned how to uh, blend and swell and cut off at the same time. And um, we would just get music, you know, um, writing all the time, you know, and singing our own songs. Um, so we wanted to be like Andre Crouch. Uh, we did a demo and we sent it to Light Records. And they told us that uh, they loved our music, but we were so different, they didn't know where to place us. And that discouraged us, it really did. It discouraged us. So we said, okay, our brothers Bobby and Tommy have gone out to California. They are now with Motown Records. Uh -huh. um, we gonna go. We gonna go check the secular world out. Oh, we were very disappointed when we found out the gospel wouldn't. You know, we didn't fit there or whatever. But we never changed our music. It's crazy because we never changed our music. Um, all this love and the um, uh, share my world, all that stuff. What's your name? Mm -hmm. uh, that stuff came from our gospel stuff. We just changed the changed it to a, a man or a woman. So what exactly did they not, were they concerned about when they, when, you know, as in the gospel scene, was it, did they want more, um, you know, I don't know what kind of, is it the harmonies? Did it sound too secular when, when they, what did you think? Did they, did you ever find out? I don't out? know. I don't think it sounds, I think that we never changed our music. So, um, I don't know, maybe they wanted hollering or, you know, I don't know, we didn't fit. <laughs> the, um, know. When you have an interesting dynamics of um, one female, a sister and, and, and brothers, you do think Gladys Knight and the Pips, how did you guys decide, okay, who's going to be singing lead and how does everyone get their parts, you know, um, in a, in in you know, in a group where there's a females and, and, and males in, in there? I think that how we had it was everybody brought a song mm -hmm. and um, a song to the table. And it was for all of us to pitch in and make sure that that song was done. Um, L brought his songs and L will sing his songs. The songs that I brought, I would, I would sing. And sometimes they were half finished. So we all would get together. We were family and we would help finish the song, but it was still their song. In the industry, as it went on, that changed. <laughs> mm. 
uh, everybody wanted their own. Oh, I do my song. I do my song. And, and I want my name on that song and all that. That came with the you know industry. But when we went in, we went in as family. And we, fin we helped finish everybody's song, but it was still their song. So uh, everybody got to sing, you know, like they wanted to sing. And I sung my songs. Um, El sung his song. If he was the one that brought the song, he was the one to sing it. And uh, we would just finish, you know, the songwriting was we helped, uh, everybody helped out. How did you get into your songwriting then? And as, as you know, just because it's, um, you know, songs are powerful. How do we get into our songwritings? Yeah, but, but yourself, I mean, did you do, how did you, did you, how did you learn to be a songwriter? I didn't learn to be a songwriter. Um, I guess just being under my uncle, my Uncle James, who was the minister of music of our church, mm. um, just following after him, watching him write the choir songs, um, just being there as he would write them. Um, we learned how to do uh, a lead, a hook, um, and, and a bridge, you know, to a song, write a story. I think it started, mine started out with poetry, um, mm. just writing poetry. And singing little melodies came from hook made hooks. And we started at a very early, early age at um, making little hooks up. And uh, I think the very first song that we wrote as children and the little children was Hallelujah, Jesus, Buckle My Shoe. <laughs> there was some nice harmonies in it. <laughs> <laughs> nice you? harmonies, okay? But as we grew older, um, we just learned how to uh, to put it in a pattern. And then when Bobby went out and, and uh, he was in Switch, we learned more of what the hooks should sound like and um, when the hooks should come and all that. It was put in a format. And uh, it was crazy because when we first came out there, we didn't know about strings and horns. We know, you know, we didn't know that that goes on the album. We do all that. So we were singing our strings. And uh, singing our horns, our horn parts, you know. So when you hear on what's your name, the ba 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 ba, -ba horns, um. and ooh la 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 strings. So is this stuff that um, when you're working with producers, eventually they'll start to be able to tell you, and then you be able to work it out. Um, down the road, because as I would assume you guys would have been playing behind, singing behind a piano and, and harmonizing. Yeah, we were just with a piano. And then we would hear all these different parts in our head and we would sing those parts, wow. you know? So it was like, um, like when we were little, the little parts of uh, uh, Fera Jaca, Fera Jaca, you know, the Fera Jaca, the, the sing behind it and all that. We mm -hmm. learned that and then we just learned how to put them in songs. It was just part of our creativity, I guess. But then so we got it from my mom. My mom, my mom would just all the time she's bouncing around the house singing, making up little melodies. Huh? And uh, we got that from her. Who who became your original because Bobby's not around? Who became the sort of I almost say choir director, but who 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 sort of shaped how okay you're singing this part, we're harmonizing here, um, as you guys That would were... be L. That would be L. Okay. But he's, he was the youngest of the first five, so how come he w was given that responsibility? I would have thought it would be more of the older, the older sex, so... Well, it was the older sex, but when we became a group, L was the one that played the keyboards, and he was the one that picked out all the parts. No, it's here. It's with this chord. Is with that, you know what I'm saying? So, Bobby and Tommy and I were never a group. Okay. Okay. But when we became a group, DeBarge, it was me, Elle, Randy, James, and Mark. So, we would usually um, sit at the keyboards and pick the parts out. out. Was so Elle Elle the only, oh, Was he the only one that could play out of? The keyboards? He, no, yeah. Bobby plays keyboard. James plays keyboards. Um, Chico plays keyboards. 
but L and Bobby were the main keyboard players in the family. Okay. So they took on that. But when Bobby was gone and it was um, um, L, he took on. But as, as, and I'm wondering, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm the oldest. A keyboard of player is going to take on, they're usually the musical director mm. because they're playing the keys and they know the parts on the keyboards. Okay. Yeah. It's not usually a bass player that can't play a keyboard or whatever. The keyboard is usually is the music director. Okay, and and, and I'm wondering because I said I'm, I'm I've got three younger brothers and I wonder if I was if we were, if I was a group, would I still think okay I'm the oldest okay I'm taking control here so were we singing okay and 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 almost organized in uh, indirectly you know but then for <laughs> you guys it wasn't a problem having the youngest of you take control it has nothing to do with the youngest it has to do with who um is able to do it yeah no, but, but as i said and as a family you know and being the oldest you were yeah and it was it seems if you were more encouraging the fact that your little brother had this talent and you could see how it was support helping the group of the family um which is important to hear because you 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 know, I think we've watched the Jacksons and then, or, or the story of Joseph and how they can be jealous of the, of uh, the older brothers being jealous of Joseph because dad's favorite. Uh, and but in 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 your environment, it felt as if he's got the talent, we, we, and he's, and as a group, we're shining. So let we 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 ride yes. that. And in the beginning, that's how it was. I think getting into the music business is what changed everything and, and put out this person more than that person or nothing like that. It wasn't like that when we were younger and growing up as children. Um, it was like, this is a, this is one. And I think that um, my uncle who was the pastor over us all was afraid of us being broke up as a family, not so much as a group um, when we went to the secular world because they made a difference between who's this and who's that and who's that and who gets this money and who gets that money. That's just the way of the world. Yeah. So uh, when the group disbanded, they didn't just break up um, a group. It was the family that was broken up. And there was jealousy that came then down the line. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody was thinking about that when we were younger and when we were first coming in to Motown Records. No, we were family, we loved one another. It wasn't about who wrote this or who wrote that or nothing. It was getting it together. And it brought a magical um, thing that neither one of us, um, even though each one of us can sing, but not one of us have been able to accomplish again. That magic was when DeBarge was together because DeBarge really was together. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, because as, as I said, when I when I think about um, um, when I think about um, the the, the Jacksons now, there was five of you. How did you decide it's just going to be the five of us? And you know, what about the other two? You know, making seven of us. I mean, how how did that just became? Well, it a, actually, it wasn't just the five of us. It started. God's Children of Harmony started as. Just me, Elle, and Randy, and other people from the church. Um, it broke down. It it got down to where it was just me, Elle, and Randy. Marty was doing his own thing, and um, James was doing his own. James was younger, actually. Okay. Um, James was like seventeen, still in high school. Okay. Um, so it was like Bobby and Tommy went out to California, paved the way. And we went out, and when we first got out there, we weren't with Motown. We was we were with um, um, another group called um, another record company called Source Records. The guys had signed. I didn't sign, but the guys had signed, and they were with a couple of other guys. Um, but we were still trying to get together as a family. We thought that we were going to come in with Bobby and Tommy, oh. and we were all going to be debarge, you know. But it didn't work out like that. The other two members. See, because Motown just wanted the family. So we gathered up as a family and um, we all looked alike. And that was, I guess, part <laughs> of it. And we all could sing. Um, and it was magical. Yeah. How did mom react when you did finally get signed to Motown? How was, was mom nervous? Everybody was proud and the first one to say it would happen. 
<laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, because it must—it's a big deal to sign with Motown. But that was that was your uncle nervous as well, or did he did he forget the nerves and just be excited? Well, he um, we were on a promotional tour, and this was after our first album that came out. Um, we had they invited my uncle Bill, and it was a surprise down to Detroit. Um, and they were giving us something big, just, you know, we had, uh, I think we had, uh, crossed over or something, something was happening and they were celebrating that. But my uncle was there and it was a surprise and he stood up and he was, gave a speech and he actually cried. And he said, I know these children, um, he knows the child, our childhood. We had a very abusive childhood uh -huh. and to see where we had came from. And he explains how he didn't agree with us leaving and going into the secular music. And then he went over to us and he said, these five fingers, he said, if the thumb was broken or the baby finger was broken, that um, they wouldn't work, the hand wouldn't work properly. Mm. So he was afraid that us as five with a hand, if one was broken, if one was taken away or whatever, that the hand wouldn't work properly, he told us to stay together. That's what he wanted more than anything, was for us to stay together. Watch out for one another, have each other's back, stay together. How did you receive that? When you, you know, did, did you? Would... Well, my uncle was like my dad to me. Mm -hmm. So, um, not just my pastor, but my dad. And he played a big part in all of our lives, you know. Mm -hmm. So we took that very seriously. Um, and when things started to spiral down and we broke up, I think we still take that very seriously. We hear his voice. He's, he's not with us now. Um, but we hear that voice saying for us to stay together. Yeah. I mean... So, um, the anointing I feel was on the family. Pardon? And I kind of explained that when I said it was magical mm. together. And I think that um, we all believe that, and that's you know what we believe. Um, kind of like startles one another. You know, mm. we miss one another. Miss that. Especially when you, as I mentioned, when you when you've gone through a lot together as a family, moved to Grand Rapids and being bonded in church and singing and harmonizing for full of fun and, and love. Then in a you know, and, and I do wonder when the first five goes go away to form the barge. Then you've got two others, and Tommy and Bobby in switch, so it leaves the three youngest behind. Um. And then the hope is okay. Well, as a five, we'll 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 hold the fort down. But as you know, most of us are, are are learning a lot about the industry and how it is. It can be divide and conquer. But the fun part is when you're recording your first album, the self-titled album, um, and you all get a chance to write. What was that process like when you're recording the barge at like, uh, around eighty eighty one? Well, the first time when we went in, we had to show Motown that um, we could do it. We could produce and we could write our own songs. Motown was a record company that was in-house, in-house producers, in-house uh, writers. Um, you Nobody came in and just wrote their own songs. You know, <laughs> they had inside writers, to, you know, and um, inside producers. But DeBarge broke that mode. And I think Bobby help us to break that mode because he came in writing his own songs um, in Switch, uh, making his own sound. And he bragged a lot about his brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so when we came, they was ready for us. I can remember him taking us up to, to Motown and they were like, it's like we already know you, you know? <laughs> this is my sister, this is my brother. She bad, he bad, he just, you know. <laughs> so, we didn't realize, we knew we were talented, but we didn't realize how much we had. We didn't realize that we could produce, mm -hmm. that um, 
our songs were great. Uh, we did have our own sound. Mm -hmm. So Motown gave us that chance. And the first thing we had to do was go do a demo and show them the songs that we had. So we was like, okay. Uh, when we first we did our showcase to get signed with them. And once we got signed, they sent us in to do a demo. And once we did that demo, uh, they were like, wow, let them go. Let them go for it. Then we went from the 16-track studio to 24- and 48-track studio, and we were just at all, okay? Oh, we could get strings to do this. Oh, we could do the horns to do this and sessions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were getting people on to work on the album that uh, we were fans of, you know, like uh, – Harvey Mason on the drums and Joe Sappho on the keyboards. And, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. that was exciting. And to see my brother, Elle, work with them, and they were at all to how talented he was, mm -hmm. you know. Um, he doesn't read music? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I just see Bobby in there directing uh, like a symphony, you know. <laughs> Watching all this, I'm like, wow, you know, I'm at odd. And then to sit up and to collaborate with them in writing, it was it was a good feeling. It was a good feeling. It, it was family. Um, I did a lot of writing with Bobby. Uh, Love me over and over again. I don't know if you know my catalog. Um, Love me over. Uh, this is my dream. Um, Friend in the sky. And then um, to work with my brother L and Bobby on the very first album was really produced by me, L and, and Bobby. So they shelved that, that album because we went with outside produce, I mean, outside management. But there's a lot of good stuff on the DeBarges, that album, uh, coming straight from church, singing our horns and our strings. <laughs> yeah. But it's a very good album. You got What's Your Name on there, you got Queen of My Heart. You got share my world, yeah. um, which we later Hes went and hesitated. Put on other album. Yeah, hesitated. You're so gentle, hesitated. Uh, so gentle, yeah. so kind. Yeah, and um, yeah, and so you, you, you're always. I mean, but I guess just writing it um, and 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 performing it. Did, does does anyone teach you, or maybe Bobby, since he was audience week? Do they say, look, this is how the music industry works? Here's uh, publishing. Here's your royalties and stuff, so you guys know what you do. So make sure everyone gets it. Okay, came later on too, after we signed and after we gave away and after we did all that. Okay, then it's like, oh, you know, Bobby was a little ahead of us, but not that much ahead of us. Wow. Um, when we first got there, we like I said, we signed with Source Records. We had seven years with another record company. I was the only one that was not signed. My brothers were signed. I had to get them out of that contract. We were starving. We were stars, not stars. We were stars. And um, we had to get out of that contract in order for Motown to even talk to us. Wow. We knew nothing about lawyers, nothing about when you're supposed to have a lawyer, wow. nothing like that. But God was with us. Um, I went up to uh, Source Records. And I talked to Logan Westbrook, who was the president at the time, myself. And I said, you got to let him go. You got to let my brothers go. I'm not signing. He wanted me to sign. I'm not signing, but I don't want to be alone. I want my brothers. I want my brothers to be with me. And that guy, that man let us out of that contract. And we were able to talk with Motown. Motown put us on salary, which no other record company did. And we were able to... Uh, Focus on just being artists. Focus on uh, being creative. Mm -hmm. um, went in the studio with Bobby before we went in for ourselves, and we learned so much just watching him um, with his songs, how he did backgrounds. You know, we would go in and we would do our background parts um, and uh, stack them. You know, we could stack them, and, and it was just—it was just—it was so much fun. It went really fast. Um, before, you know, we would be there, we would start a session like at the midday of the day and we wouldn't be out till early in the morning wow. and time went by fast, but it was all fun, you know, all fun. I, I think Elle mentioned that um, you you guys were trying to record and Motown wanted to get uh, outside writers and he said Stevie Wonder shows up and tells Barry Gordy that you guys should, that he, that Motown should 
let these guys do their thing and don't stifle their creativity. And and Al was like, well, one, I, I was shocked Stevie Wonder knew who we were, and two, he didn't even know what the word stifle was. But <laughs> did you <laughs> did you see the mo? Did, did you see that they? You mentioned that Motown gave you the space to do your stuff, but did, was it a a hard thing for them to do initially? Did they need encouragement to allow you guys showcase your talent? I don't think that they even needed encouragement after they heard um, our demo. Demo, yeah. You know, um, I felt that they they felt we were great. Let them let them do their own thing. You know, mm -hmm. so we went in and did our own thing. I think Bobby might have had a lot to do with it. Like I said, Bobby being there first, Bobby being able to produce his own stuff, come in with his own records. And that was like a, that was like a record in itself mm. for us because Bobby was like, you know, let me produce them. But Bobby didn't really do the producing because he was out with Switch. So he let me and L do it. Mm. So um, Bobby having that trust in us and saying they could do it or whatever. He was really close to Barry Gordy at the time. And Barry Gordy said, let him go. Wow. Yeah. When you move to, I mean, it's amazing because, you know, the way the industry is, you, you'd you have two, three years before the next album. But within a year, you're, you're coming out with um, All This Love as an album. Um, why was it so quick between two of the albums, between The Barge and then All This Love, just a year? Because they shelved the first album. <laughs> we signed with Outside Management. And they weren't doing anything with that album because of that. We didn't know that, okay? We were like, we're done with our album. We were proud of that album. Barry Gordy came in the very end. And um, everybody was like, the chairman has not been into any one session since the Jackson Fives have left. They were, he wasn't even involved in anything like that. We didn't know that, okay? And... um. They was like, oh, wow, Mr. Gordy's in on this session. And yeah, he came in and he uh, was uh, working with us and and uh, mixing and, and all that. Uh, but little did we know, we thought Mr. Gordy was gone from the you know company. He wasn't running, doing anything with any other artists anymore. But they said that Mr. Gordy was interested in managing us. We didn't know that. And we had signed outside management already. So when that was found out, that was like, what an insult, okay? You signed it with outside manager and Mr. Gordy wanted to be your management. So we were like, uh-oh, <laughs> nothing happened, you know? Nothing happened to, we, they put the song out. We barely heard it on the radio. Um, we were hearing Tracy Lattisaw. I was in Washington, D.C. And I'm like, I'm tired of hearing Tracy Lattisaw. Can we hear what's up? <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? That's our our single. So I called Mr. Gordy. Not Mr. Gordy. I called Jermaine's office. I knew Addie. And Jermaine was the one that got us. Jermaine Jackson was the one that got us with Motown. Mm -hmm. So I um I called her and I said, Addie, we we made a boo-boo. <laughs> we signed with outside management. She says, Yes, I know. It's all over. Okay. Um she said, they 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 shelved your your album. I'm like, yeah, no. So she began to, you know, tell me what all that meant. And, you know, so I'm like, oh, my God. We didn't know. We didn't know Mr. Gordy wanted to manage us. We didn't, you know. So I wrote this letter to Mr. Gordy apologizing, saying that we didn't know, you know, and that uh, we had to get out of that contract with the management that we were in. And I'm telling you again. <laughs> Um, this is all in my book too. Mm -hmm. Um, God was with us. Okay. Um, I, uh, me and Elle got together, looked at the contract, don't know nothing about, you know, um, contracts or anything like that. But we found this little clause in there that said, if they didn't get in touch with us within so many hours after we responded to them, that we could get out of that contract. <laughs> so we knew that they weren't going to get in touch with us because of their, you know, uh, track record. Actually, uh, we were trying to get in touch with them with different stuff and they would never ever. I said, that's where they're going to mess up at. And they did. And because of that, we were able to get out of 
that contract. <laughs> and I was able to get a letter to Mr. Gordy. Mr. Gordy called us in and the rest is history. So we did an album right then. And that's why those albums came so close together. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's, yeah, your label, you know, that's conflict of interest, your label being your manager. You know, they're supposed to have a, someone looking that's what, after no, you. That's what Bobby told us. And that's why we signed with a, no, 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 conflict of interest. Go get out. Don't, don't, don't let them, don't let them do it. But it was Mr. Gordy, Mr. Gordy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> goodness, see, that's, 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 yeah, that, that's, that's not fair. But I mean, what could you do at the time? The, um, yeah. the, with him as your manager and, and record label, uh, what, what, what do you think you guys did differently with um, All This Love, the album, compared to the debut album? You know, did you have it? Because the songs of that, of your sophomore album, you know, produces songs that are still hits and still, you know, in treasures today. But what did you guys do differently? Um, we didn't sing our horns in string purse. <laughs> we got strings to do it. We sung it to the strings and they sung it. We sung it to the horns and they sung it. That was the difference right there. Otherwise, I think we grew. Um, we grew from that. Um, and we grew, I guess, in just our relationships as far as lovers, our lovers. Um, we were happy. And uh, that's where I guess all this love came from. Um is waiting for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Time will reveal. You know, those songs were in us. We just um, brought them up and uh, um, finished them off. Yeah, and so and and you know, because I'm looking at the um, looking at the um, oldest love album, um, I could see, you know, I like yourself and uh, Randy and L. I like it. <laughs> I like it, yes. Um, it's getting stronger. Um, life begins with you. Um, I'm in love with you. So just being able to 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 write and as a family, you're like, yep, that sounds great. Let's just sing. No one is thinking publishing again. No one's thinking all those things. It's just like writing the songs as we do as a family and putting them out there. Say that again, would you? <laughs> no, sorry. So when you are writing the, the songs for the All This Love I, and as I I went through some of the tracks that you wrote, um, I'm in love with you. Um, life begins with you. It's getting stronger. Um, you know, um, even I like it. As a family, you you all writing, and somebody's bringing in a little little parts, but you're writing, putting your names to it. No one is still thinking about publishing and and no. and you're just writing as you would as a family and enjoying it. And and your manager when isn't it, when, it yeah. came, when the pressure came of uh this is my song, that's my song, and you gotta have this song together, all that stuff. So the creativity to me was kind of, you know, starfold. Yeah. But mm -hmm. but as of the second album, so as with Barry Gordy as your manager, what was different? What did you notice any difference? Did he guide you guys differently? Did he because it still seems as if you guys we still, still were do we still were in charge of our music. We just had to pass get it past him. Um, but Barry Gordy did work with L. Um, they have like a you can find on YouTube where we were all together. And I think where, where we where they, they were working with us was on uh being on Soul Train, being on um American Bandstand. Twenty five. We were dancers, okay? And uh <laughs> <laughs> so Barry Gray was like, just let him go, just let him go. So, <laughs> so on Soul Train, we, you know, we was just all over the place. Um, <laughs> as we grew, <laughs> all this love, when we did the Motown 25, they gave us choreography um, and Rhythm of the Night choreography. Oh, yeah. yeah, before we, 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 we've got a little while before we get to, to those ones. <laughs> But uh, cause I do remember you guys on uh, Motown Twin, uh, no, with um, American Bandstand with um, Dick Clark and stuff, and um, and it, it just seems as if there was you know you know with the Jacksons were doing their moves and everyone does their moves, but the, the bars just fell as if you no, know, we just sway to the side. You know, so it's like, 
what was that about? Was it you guys didn't want to dance? You... We weren't dancers. We were singers, songwriters, producers, not dancers. So, um, and uh, like I said, as as it went, Motown saw that and they got us choreographers. <laughs> You think about Motown, the, the Temptations, the Four Tops, the, they were all about that, but they, they just almost forgot about the fact that, that we was need in house. That's what they would do in house back then. They stopped doing that by the time we got there. Um, um, but when we got with Mr. Gordy, that was that was like um, uh, a privilege that we were with Mr. Gordy um, because we wouldn't have got that if Mr. Gordy wasn't our manager. We okay. wouldn't have got that. So we got, we did, we got more attention. We got to be on the Motown 25. Um, uh, we got to uh, go to Europe. Um, yeah, it, it was a big difference with Mr. Gordy as our, as our manager. Yeah, and then, you, you know, cause as I said, you just go from one album, I mean, every year, but there was a little two year break before you come out with um, Ribbon of the Night. And I think this is when because uh, by the time that came out, I, I'd, I'd moved from England to Nigeria to go to high school, at boarding school, and Ribbon of the Night was a massive song um, around Nigeria, and I think most parts of Africa it was just, it, because it sounded very similar, it reminded us of um, Lana Ritchie's All Night Long, that type of feel good, so it it, um, it connected with a lot of us in Africa at the time, Um and that's what the that's what the record company did. Okay, they saw that Lionel Richie's song was going off, and let's work off that. So uh, they got Diane Warren mm -hmm. and gave you know listen to this song and uh, give them a song like that. Now that's different because you guys yeah. are writing a lot of your tracks, but when somebody else could did did you not feel as if well we could write off it? Why 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 they bring somebody else out? Or the, well, what was the thoughts? among you guys as writers and producers we didn't produce that as well yeah but um, they were trying to take us over from r b to pop how did you guys feel as a family when they, they, were, they were trying to make that shift we were just going with the flow okay so there was no like no 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 with r b no 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 arguments at all uh-uh Okay. Okay. And but as I said, it was a you know big, 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 big hit. Um, was that the only? Vi am, am I right? Um, it, there's some trivia question that says "Rhythm of Night" was the only video that was shot. Other videos, other, other. But why was that then? Why would that be the only video of your on your third album music video? Because that's when videos first start coming out. Videos weren't out before then. Oh, so they'll probably get performances when you're on, say, American Bandstand or... Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then the group woke up after that, so it wasn't... We we woke up right when the videos were coming out. Oh, yes, yeah, because next is... The, oh, so... But then you have a global hit with Rhythm of the Night and and you've got a video and, and doors are opening. Um. I would have thought this would be like, wow, we're finally really mainstream and, and we're moving. And then you've done Motown 25. What do you think as the oldest cost of the, it's not to, not to. Well, it started back before the rhythm of the night that they had started working on actually uh, L doing his own album, <laughs> you know, so. Um, that was bringing conflict, did contracts that we were getting ready to sign and this one making more money than that one and and um, this one getting more attention than that one. That stuff was going on behind the scenes. So by the time we got to um, Rhythm of the Night, that album, you see a great big picture of Elle and four little pictures of the rest of us guys oh, yes. on there. Yeah, so that was our politics. Our things were happening. El was on his way out. We didn't know it. We happened to look on TV one day, and El was there singing by himself. Who's holding down now? Okay. <laughs> wow, Mike, I'm I'm just looking at the album cover there. Um, wow. 
What did your manager say? <laughs> Hence, you have the same manager. manager. Was the one that was doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's, it's like, you know, um, the music industry whispers in the lead singer's ear or the one that's doing this or whatever. And then it's, it's animosity going on with the group members because this one is getting more attention than that one. And if you gave this one just as much attention as that one, the Bajra was a family. And actually if the attention was put on any one of us, we all could have went because we were, it's unlike the Jackson Five, each one of us could sing and each one of us could write and each one of us could produce. Mm -hmm. um, but that brought a lot of animosity among the family members, okay, that was going on. Um, especially among the boys, among the boys. And then I had a family of eight very good looking guys, okay, in the family. <laughs> and then we had the women, the the fans, the, you know, all that. And it brought a lot of animosity and that caused a lot of problems in what was going on in the group, the barge. And everybody was coming like this. I could do my own album. I could do my own album. I could do my own. You know, so that's the group had broke up. L went on his own. Chico was coming in. Um, I was still in DeBarge. Bobby was coming in to take L's place. And something happened with that. All that went crazy. And Motown took me as a solo artist. Yeah. I mean, so it was me. They had me, L. Huh? No, no. I'm, I, I, I guess um, it's um, yeah. It, it will. As I mentioned, if any of one, as you said, any one of us, yeah. I, and I wonder if that Barry was Geralt Gordy was thinking just how big Michael had become away from the siblings, and it was like this could be. Uh, I missed out on 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 a off the wall and thriller. So L could be as big. So let me. Let me do the same type of thing. I don't know if that's if he's just thinking about something like that, and because you yeah, wonder no, why. Thinking. why All I know is he's, yeah. he's thinking business. Yeah, that's, that's you know that I know. Okay, and um, because even when they took me as a solo artist, um, they only took me, and I didn't know this at the time, uh, till later because they didn't want any other company to pick me up. Um, they had made DeBarge big and it was coming at a time where I could have been picked up by another record company and they didn't want that. So they picked me up and just helped me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the focus was on L. They were going to make the focus on L and, um, you know, that's what it really caused a lot of confusion. Like I said, it wasn't in just a group, in a family. Yeah, 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 the siblings. I mean, do you, do you guys yeah. have, and, and I guess it's, you know, the rest of us, you know, we assume we're all sitting at dinner at night and having a conversation with moms. But, you know, you guys are adults, so, you, you, you know, you all have your own places and your family, so you're not... You know, meet. You're not sitting and having dinner together like you did when you were kids. So you don't have the space to have these conversations to say what's going on. Okay, how do we resolve it? Come on, we, you know, we love each other. I, I guess it's it's not like that when you get older and, and you're in this situation. Yeah, life happens. You yeah. Know? Um, my brother Bobby, we lost him, who was a big brother of the family, and um, never dealt with him. Uh, dealt with that, his death um, as a family, uh, just getting over all the things of the group breaking up, a family breaking up, um, and then trying to still withhold as a family, going to uh, El's, the concerts of everybody else singing the bar songs, the songs that we wrote together, the songs that we sung together. It was very hurtful. Um, to even go and not even be able to get backstage, okay? Um, hey, we're the barge, you know? And then the drug problems and all that, you know, begin to happen. And not just with the barge, with L2, you know? So it has never come full circle and it is my dream 
um, and a desire of my heart that we come back together at this stage of life, just as a family. Um, I used to dream of us all coming back together. The geek was that the barge come back together and sing. But I'd be just happy of us to just come back together as a family. Um, it's very hard to uh, be where we are and where we, where we went in life, um, the fame and everything, to even talk about it because fans see us as this loving family. The barges love and they're just, I just love that family and they're, you know, um, and we do love one another. That's, that's not it. But it's, it's, we're very estranged. And it breaks my heart, you know, really, because um, we did it all together. We made it all together. And we all know God. And only what you do for Christ will last. And it's like, I've been there, done that. Nothing else out there that uh, really means anything to me. Can't take it when you die, you know? It's all here. So to me, uh, I just want my family back. That means more to me than anything. But um, it's a God, I know that it's, it's a God thing, you know, for that to happen. And, uh, but it's my desire. It's my heart's desire. Yeah, but, but I, I did see you guys as a family singing in a church. Um, I don't know if somebody recorded all of you singing in a church. L, Tico, J, everyone was there singing. I remember singing My Heart, My Soul, harmonizing as a family. Was that a one off situation? Because it was the most, most, most powerful um, videos I'd ever seen, just seeing all of you guys just singing uh, and harmonizing with some of you and the nephews. A of them. Yeah. And, and it's sad because the second generation is so talented, um, our children's children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our children and our children's children and nothing is being done. The past hasn't, the torch hasn't been passed. Um, the only one out there that's working is L. And, um, you know, it's it's sad to me that we can't come together as a family. Um, and, and it's sad when I see everybody else coming together, like, you know, New Edition and, and um other groups coming back together just to go back out on the road again and I wish mm -hmm. you know it's it's my heart desire uh you know because um it, it's it's just very painful that's all that's all I have to say it's very painful I'm able to sing and um I know that my brothers if they ever you know um uh, I want to say get the chance again that they they are able to sing as well. So, um, mm. but I've seen you guys <laughs> sing around your mom. Um, well, L would, and um, I've seen uh, L, and then also Chico. I think this is so you know sometimes we'll see the Instagram live and um, you, you, even recently yourself and and L was singing. Um, on a on a on a in a video within the last couple of months or so, um, is are these just rare ones when you just get around to nothing pre pre planned? It was just like nothing, let's just... nothing just happened to be um, together at that time. Didn't know we were going to be, and the fans are sing sing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. The um, how's your mom doing? Because I know it, that she was she, just recently. She she did seem to go to hospital for a while. Is she oh, she's okay? My mom is doing. She's okay. She's okay. Um, keep her in your prayers. Yeah, but then for yourself, you know what? Um, when you when you did come out, um, with um, um, the kept ones in 2008 what was your thoughts around writing and uh, starting an autobiography 
my autobiography was written actually for me to have last cries. Um, I had uh, gotten out of the church, put my Bible under my table, my shelf, in the living room, and I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. The Lord followed me until I could follow him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that there was a God. And um, I wanted him to come see about me. I had been on drugs and was going up and down, back and forth on that because of the things that had happened in my childhood that I never dealt with. So I started writing my book just for me. Mm -hmm. And as I wrote it, uh, it was dropped in my spirit that there are a lot of people out there that are hurting just like I'm hurting. Mm -hmm. And that I would like to be a mirror to those that um, need to hear my story. Uh, to hurting people. The secrets keep you sick. Mm -hmm. And that how I got through. You know, so there's it's a three book series. The first one is about my childhood. Um, which is very good because a lot of people want to know uh, what happened to the barge and the, and the, uh, the drug problems and, and all that. Um, so I wrote the book, like I said, for me and wanted to put it out for others to be a mirror so they, they can know that um, only what you do for Christ will last, how mm -hmm. God brought me through all of that. The third book, the first book is, is like I said, my childhood. The second book is the fame years and the drug problems, the breaking up of the group. Uh, the third book is um, the aftermath, how God brought me through all that, where I am today. And um, I said it's called the kept ones because God had kept me through them. <laughs> Awful lot of stuff. I don't look like what I've been through. Yeah. And um, yeah. So I picked a side and stopped straddling the fence. And um, for God, I will stand. For God, I will die. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, you know, when, when this is going through, um, going on, do you, do you think there's, um, you know, when you said you left, you left walking with God, and do you think the void that was occupied by your faith and 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 God, when you walk walk away from that, there's a big space there, and 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 that's where you know um, it's hard to um, find wisdom when you're working in an industry like the music industry that that had that just that soulless, and without. God being an anchor, do you think that's, you know, for anyone else that's trying to get in the industry and and and, and might assume that, you know, they've got my back, I can I can put God to the side until I get my success. Do you think it is as, as, as something that you'd really do need? You know, this is when you this is when God is probably the most important right in the midst of, of being in the lines then. He's the foundation. He gives direction, he gives wisdom, all of that which you need in this music industry and especially today. Mm. People are selling their souls to be famous and um, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Um, I've been in that dark place being on drugs and some people don't make it out. I'm glad to be here. I've been in a place to where I might have sold my soul. I've been in the music industry. It wasn't going on back in the day like it is, my day like it is now. But only what you do for Christ will last. They're looking for what I got right now. And that's peace of mind. You can't buy it. Money can't buy it. And I don't care how much money you got. When COVID came, we all were the same. And it's the same mm -hmm. with, you know, it's, it's, it's not worth losing your soul over 
It's not worth the peace of mind that you can have when you go to bed at night. You know, all money ain't green. And those people look like they're happy. No, they're not happy. You see, look at what's going on today. They're fighting one another, telling on one another, going to bed with one another, sacrificing one another, okay? And anybody, uh, we all were born with this void inside of us. And that void belongs to Jesus. How do I know that? I've tried it all. And when I've tried everything and everything failed, I tried Jesus. And that's what keeps me today. Mm -hmm. I don't want nothing that he's not in. Okay? Jesus is success. Jesus allowed the things that happen to me in life. And I am here today. Not for me. It's bigger than me. To tell those that want to be in the music industry, you must have a foundation. You must know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even if you decide to go away or whatever, he will follow you until you can follow him. But you mm -hmm. might not be as lucky as me. And the only reason why I'm here, like I said, is to be a mirror mm -hmm. to you, to let you know that he's the only one to take you out that darkest place. You know, when we get into drugs and all that stuff, we get into witchcraft. There's more than we don't see mm -hmm. than what we see. And uh, it happens in, over there first before it happens here. And God allows for different reasons, okay? But you don't want to become reprobate mind is when you lost your soul, you sold your soul, and, and, and uh, you can't get back. And a lot of times you don't even know you did it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what's happening in our world today. Yeah, I think that um, uh, fame seems, um, and, and money feels as if, you know, that's the be and an end or everyone is chasing that. And um, and what we're seeing from those of you who have gone through that, especially within the entertainment industry, is that you come out and realize you've gained the world and, and uh, it wasn't worth it. Wasn't, it wasn't worth it. Um, in the midst of all this that's going on, I mean, when, the, when, when you get signed to Motown to, and to come up with your solo album, does Barry Gordy still manage you and trying to, you know, uh, this is probably 80, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking 80, 86 or so. Um, it was a good golden time for R&B music. Is he not seen? how do we get Bonnie to be, you know, our, our next big female sensation? I, 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 was that on their mind or was it, let's just put anything out there so no one else gets her? There. <laughs> Number wow. two. So they didn't even put efforts in in any, you know, they could have they could no. they could have gone better producers and pushed the songs on radio. I think they got good producers. I think they, you know, uh, all that, but they just didn't push it. Um, you know, they didn't put anything behind me. No. Wow. And, and then you know, it's like, hey, like I said, there was a lot of stuff going on with DeBarge, period. Mm -hmm. uh, the personal things that were going on between us and, you know, as a group and individually that caused a lot of uh, things that were going on in the business, you know. Uh, was it a good business, you know, investment? Um, or should we just put all of our efforts here? You know, mm -hmm. they had just signed Chico and uh, they had uh, actually... Uh, L has just started to be on his own. And um, so here I am saying, okay, I'm going shopping, you know? And they're like, no, we don't want them to take her. And they can, okay? And they put all the investment in her because that's all they got. So we'll take her and hold her. And that's what they did. And so, yeah, it was very hurting. But it's okay because God allowed. Yeah. And I'm here today through all that, through my childhood, the things that happened to me in my childhood, um, through the music industry, through being the oldest and watching my brothers and them um, fight amongst one another for losing my brother that was right next to me, mm -hmm. um, 
for the different marriages that I went through, <laughs> all of this stuff today. I'm here today and I'm here to tell the world that only what you do for Christ will last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you've gone through, I mean, I don't think there's anyone who, um, I mean, we also the unsung, uh, we've seen you on, on different things and we've, and, you know, so it's, we can see and we've heard and we know that you guys individually and collectively have, have experienced quite a, a lot. And, and that's how I keep ref referring back to your uncle who, you know, almost was trying to have one say prophesy, but he was like, man, there's something special in you guys as a family and the enemy's going to try and take it away. <laughs> and and almost as if no, we'll be fine. And 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 but no one can predict how dangerous and how challenging it, it can be. And you wonder why all this is happening if there isn't such an amazing special talent that's been placed in the individual you guys as a family that is worth fighting for. Um and um you know, if something isn't as precious, then it, it's it's not uh, that the enemy doesn't put in the effort. But it felt as if they went overtime for you guys uh, as as a family. How does mum, your strong mum, manage to see her kids? I mean, did did you know how does she? Could she could she talk to you guys? And or is it hard to listen? Um, um, in the when in those challenging times I think that mom handled it the best way she knew how to handle it um it had to be painful for her uh mm. actually to watch all her children be on drugs okay mm. um and that stems from the things I guess that happened in our childhood uh and even dealing with the industry the breakup of the group the breakup of her family um all we had was each other as as children uh, because we weren't accepted by, you know, anyone other than ourselves. I mean, um, my father's family disowned us. We never knew them. Hmm. And uh, my mom's family was just always this thing going on and they're half breeds, you know. Um, so we all we had was one another and hmm. music. Hmm. And so... Um, like I said, when the group broke up, it wasn't just a group. group. Mm -hmm. It was a family. And um, Mama watching that happen must have been very hurtful mm -hmm. for her. And um, I really think that uh, my mom um, had a dream as well to be a star. And I think that's why she put it in us mm -hmm. um, you know, a gospel singer, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and we never really got to a lot of promises, mom, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. And <laughs> you know, um, but that never came full circle either. And now my mom is um uh, in a nursing home, okay. And so that's kind of sad to me that 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 didn't come full circle. So I just wish that um it would all come full circle and that we would like I said earlier come back together as a family i think that would be something my mom would love to see what well, what would what you should. what would you envision it to be what would you think would you would it be to just sing at different shows or are you looking to just i mean what what would you envision if, if in an ideal world with coming back as a family what what would that look like It's a God thing. Um, giving our life back to the Lord. I don't think that any of my brothers have gotten as far as I have with dealing with myself. I think that we all need to deal with ourselves and then come together as a whole. That makes sense. I know that God loves us all. He loves them like he loves me. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for each one of us individually. I believe that with, with all my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my hope. That's my hope. But 
that has to be done first. Come to the realization of self, you know? I mean, we don't come here as little children and say, I'm going to be a drug addict and all that, but life happens and things happen in life. And we get in places that are dark. Mm -hmm. And um, only way I can get us through that is God. I think that DeBarge needs to do that. Yeah. And Individually you know, I, and collectively. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as I said, I, I, you know, when I'm not doing this, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a therapist. And, oh, are uh, you? <laughs> yeah, I'm a therapist, yeah. Uh, I work with your, I work with under twenty ones, but then also with families, and and it is true that you know being able to when when you know anyone that deals with with you know with with experience trauma, it then has um, it's like if you if you don't put oil in your engine, and after a a while the engine just breaks down. And you'd say, oh, why did my engine break down? And it built, it was something that happened six months ago when you didn't put enough oil and it got to this point. And so, uh, you know, with trauma, when something has happened and it's not dealt with, it has a way of affecting what's going to be going on forward. And you can patch it up, <laughs> but if you haven't really experienced it and, and gone through it... Okay, okay, just went off. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. Okay, I was talking about the prodigal son. Yeah, it, it says is. to himself and went home. So I think everybody has to come to themselves, to the realization, to the end of their road, to whatever it is. And you know what? God knows, God has a way of getting us there. He does, mm -hmm. you know? So everybody has to come to themselves. And uh, realize, okay, it's time to just go to the mountaintop to me with just me and God, you know, and um, relationship, you know, relationship. And that's if you got to put everybody else aside and sit at his feet, mm. you know, because you can't even know who you are until you know him, you know. Yeah. But, but then... How hard was it? Because you talked about writing um, the kept ones as a way of healing yourself. Um, but how hard was it on the others to see you be very open about what was going on with you indirectly means it was happening to them? But would you think it was like, oh, okay, no, you know, uh, did, did you think it might have been hard for them to see? and feel as if they're now going to be judged based on what has happened to you. Was that hard then as an author to decide what to re report, uh, to, to disclose and what to keep? Yes. Yes. Um, and to get the grace from God to even uh, tell your story, you know, mm. you don't want everybody knowing your, your mess and, and, and this and that and all that. Um, yes, family members, you, you know, uh, what would they feel and all that, but I wanted to be set free so bad that it didn't matter. It was about me being set free and I went with God and I asked God to give me the words, how to write it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going, trying to hurt nobody. I was just trying to be set free. I wanted to live. And I was running for my life. And I had to have last cries. I had to go and open all that up because it was like I was a shoestring. Mm -hmm. All these shoestrings, okay? Tied in knots. I didn't even know where to begin. Mm -hmm. And it was those things that I thought I had right, okay? Was the thing I knew it wasn't nobody but God because I thought I had those things right. That was very enlightening to me. I knew the things that I were doing wrong and I knew the things that were done wrong. Mm -hmm. But those things that I thought I had right, okay, 
like the love and the forgiveness. I had all that wrong, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, God had to deal with me um, and how I was just living my life. Um, even in writing my book, I was going through um, the thing of being pitiful or powerful, okay? And I'm like, Lord, what are you saying? And I was reading the Bible and it was talking about the guy that's that uh, laid by the water for 38 years. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the past, yeah. He asked him, did you want to be made whole? And I'm like, why is he asking him, do you want to be made whole? He's been there 38 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and God began to deal with me. Did I want to be made whole? God, I want to be made whole. Of course I want to be made whole, okay? Mm -hmm. He showed me you can be pitiful or you can be powerful. Are you writing this book to be pitiful or powerful? Mm -hmm. And I have to think, I want to be pitiful. I want my feeling sorry for me. Do I live my life that way? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to tell the story, but I want it to be a redemption story. Look where he brought me from, because life happens. People got stories deeper than mine, okay? Life happens. The thing is, God brought me out of all that. I made it all the way up. As far as we could go, whatever was going, could have went even higher. But God allowed things to happen, and they did happen. But I wasn't free. Not like I am today. Mm -hmm. Now that don't matter to me. Because I have Christ in my life. I have direction. Mm -hmm. I have leadership. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I want to be powerful. You know, I can scoot over to the water. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? An inch at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And fall in. <laughs> yeah. See, so I want to be made whole. I want to be made whole. And the only one that knows me better than anybody is the manufacturer. The one that made me. That before the foundation of the world, Okay. The one that put, that d d draws me, you know. I want him to tell me who I am, and I'm gonna stand on that. Mm -hmm. Cause that's my only hope, man. Everything else is let me down, and it works for me. Yeah. But as I said, it does. It's it's the the challenge of do I p p cover up what I've gone through to protect my, my family or do I just speak the truth in order to protect my family in the longer run and and that then becomes the dilemma uh, of any author because um, anyone doing an autobiography because of course publishers would try and sell it as much as possible and pick out elements of uh, extracts that seem to uh, that somebody else might assume it's really putting them in a bad spot. Cause I know, I think that, you know, it felt as if you, your tell all book was almost a way of uh, damaging your family. And, and as opposed to what you've been saying bravely is about, look, I need to be set free. And it's almost like the AAMAA alcohol anonymous where they have to go and, and say, you know, apologize for something that happened 20 years ago in a way just to be set free from that so it's like and i'm not living in the guilt and the guilt in itself but trying to distract myself with the guilt can lead you to go and find a distraction which could be in some cases self-harm it could be drugs it could be alcohol um it could be any type of some things like that um and i guess knowing the context as to why you, you wrote your autobiography and and why you needed to be as honest as you can really makes a massive difference for us to see it must have been a hard journey and it, it was done out of love as opposed to vindictiveness or trying to 
throw somebody else on the bus. Like, well, I, I'm not good performing at concerts, so I'm going to try and drag you down with me, kind of thing. Well, I believe those that have read my book don't get that at all. Mm -hmm. I wrote it out of love. Um, it's not to hurt nobody, you know. It's just um, the truth has set you free. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I took God with me. And I asked God to help me to write my book where it wouldn't be that I was hurting anybody else. Yeah. You know, I'm telling um, my story from my eyes. And it's not vindictive because I love everybody. I love my dad. I love my mom. Um, I don't even like people to even talk about them because it's not their life. It's not, you know, mm. when I hear different ones say, well, their mom did this and their mom didn't do this. No, 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 no. That's not why I wrote my book. I wrote my book to see what Satan did to a family. Yeah. The book was written before us and um, Satan looked in. And he peeked in too and he said, I, they're not going to get to their destiny. She's not going to get there. Mm -hmm. And that's my job to make it. So I'm saying, look what Satan did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I learned that God gave me the best mother and father that he wanted me to have. Yeah. Okay. And my father molested me. Okay. And we lived in it for years. So God had to show me. Honor thy mother and father. You honor the position. And why am I doing it unto God? Mm -hmm. So these things are what I express yeah. in my book. Look how he brought me out. Look mm -hmm. what Satan did. Okay? I'm not the only one. Yeah. There's other people that are being hurt every day. Yeah. Okay? Child abuse. Mm -hmm. All that. You know? So it's not on no one person. Look at that person. Look at that person. They're this and that, that. No. My real enemy was Satan, is yeah. Satan, yeah. okay? That's what it's about. How do you keep yourself from um, from slipping, you know, because if somebody else is, if somebody's watching this and they're thinking, how do I keep myself from going back? What are the things that you do to go forward? And, 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 I stay. In the word of God, mm -hmm. I say at his feet, I have learned to do that because I've fallen so many times, okay? Mm -hmm. You can call me too much if you want to, but that works for me, okay? When he said keep the word ever before your eyes and your ears, okay, I guard my heart, okay? I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I am totally submitted. I had to totally submit myself to that. And like I said, I'm... Straddled, straddled the fence years. And the Bible said he'll spit you out your mouth if you're hot or if you're cold. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, lukewarm, be hot or either cold. Okay. So I picked a side and I stand on that side. Yeah. That's what keeps me. Yeah. Uh, we're, There's we're, distractions everywhere, believe me. Yeah. We wake up every day to distractions of this world, mm. distractions of our flesh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and the enemy. Yeah. Yeah, but you can do it. Mm. You can do it when you renew your mind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I, uh, as a therapist, when I'm about to discharge somebody from, from, from therapy, um, instead of trying to go through what we learned and, and, and try to remember that, I'm very much focused on how do you keep yourself focused going forward? Because if you're constantly looking forward, there isn't any time to look backwards. And um, because, yeah, if you're always thinking, um, if, if you want to aim for the stars, then you land on the moon, it just means that you have no time to look backwards to the things yeah, that have yeah, pulled, yeah. pulled, pulled you back. Um, you've... only to see where he brought you from. Yeah, That's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To see, yeah, to really to acknowledge where you come from, but you're always looking forward, and you're not trying always. to stay there. Towards the mark, yeah. towards that mark. Yeah. Is there are there plans then? Now you've written your trip to to release to release more books as an author, or what? 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 what well, are... I have the third one to finish yet. Um, 
the aftermath, what's going on now, um, how God brought me through all that. The first book's just telling the story, first two books, and um, I'm finishing off the third book, and I want to do some motivational speaking um, and also recording. I'm working mm -hmm. on also a story, I mean, um, <laughs> a movie um, from the kept ones of, of from my eyes. Okay. okay. And um, do you plan to do any of the singing with your with your children, or or are you oh, hopefully? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how yeah. hard is it to go into the studio now and trying to record a song? Well, or even nothing in the studio now. You can have a studio in your house. You know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you can have the studios right there. They're so different today. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, one of the things when when I do, um, I always ask my guests, you know, as a, towards the end of my as, um, interviews, is that if you, um, to try and find out what your favorite all-time movie is, and I always paint the scenario that if you were on a, in an elevator and you, and you before they get you out, you've got time, so you get to watch your favorite movie, what would you be watching wow that's a good one because i'm really not a really big movie watcher um it'd probably be strange to you but like uh, i like movies like one flew over the cuckoo's nest okay. whatever <laughs> <laughs> whatever happened to baby jay <laughs> okay <that's easy>. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the type of movies I like. Okay, so it you know so I mean all time favorite movie what what would that be One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest or <laughs> Okay, that's it. You know everyone has a different variety. Of <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a real movie watcher. Yeah, no, so, they, what, what's your all time favorite song? Like by any by any you know it could be anybody. <laughs> His strength is perfect when my strength is gone. When our strength is gone, by CC Whining. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you know, it's it's uh, no, it's good that you have. But you, you I say, if you caught yourself away from, as you said earlier, sexual music, or uh, or you go back to the gospel music, or. I like Marvin Gaye's. Okay, you know, you know, Marvin Gaye fan. <laughs> the angel. Wow! Did you did you get to meet him and and have? Oh yeah! Wow! <laughs> did you, were you ever starstruck by We're Stevie Wonder fan too? So yeah, but were you ever starstruck? Be I mean, being signed to Motown and there's the you know there is Stevie and, and you know Marvin Gaye and uh, Smokey and the Temptations. I mean, Diana Ross. <laughs> did, did you ever get starstruck? With Stevie, of course, um, and with Marvin Gaye, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I was just, yeah. <laughs> Motown Twenty Five. You would have ever you everyone in one building. Well, that was great. I have a chapter in my book, in the second book about Motown Twenty Five. That was just phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. My goodness. Yeah, I remember when they introduced you guys. I used to think that you guys were Latin American. Lots uh, of people did. <laughs> yes, because of oh, Puerto Rican, because even your younger brother, Chico, I'm thinking, okay, he's, he's, he's Latino. <laughs> the barge, you never, never heard the name before, so it sounded Spanish. And then you guys are very light skinned. So it wasn't until L was on Instagram, which says, yeah. I love you, Mom. I'm thinking, who's maybe I thought it was maybe a nanny or something. Like, who's this black woman? And he's <laughs> because you know your your chicos looked looked like he was Latino. You know, <laughs> bars, the hair was was straight. Never realized that you you know you 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 know your we're mom's, trios. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Well, I mean, in in Nigeria, we 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 would say you were. Um, we call them half caste in, in in Nigeria nowadays. People say mixed race, but yeah. um, um, you know, but yeah, but you know, they were you know, but never, but then in America, most 
a lot of um, African Americans are. You could get the, you know, I, mean, I don't know if you saw Spike Lee's School Day. So there's a lot of light skin, right. African American, and dark skin. So, yeah, well, it, 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 <laughs> for us, I was, I think I was in Nigeria when I came out, and we couldn't understand the fact that the, the complexion of your darkness has, you know, puts you in different states. Uh, sta yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> wow. So we're now beginning 2024. What are the things that we should expect to see from Barney Divide 2024? Mm, some motivational speaking, um, more interviews, uh, my book, my third book coming out uh, in the three book series, The Capped One, um, doing some, um, I said motivational speaking, right? Yeah, now. yeah. Motivational speaking. Doing some recording, um, doing some music as well as um, a script being made and I'm shopping my story. Okay. Wait, when you talk about music, are you um, looking to feature on people's stuff? Or are you looking to record your own music? And what, what, what is it that you're more leaning on? Um, recording my own and maybe doing some work with others. Yeah. Yeah. And in the, back, you know, in the background, there is still that prayer that the family can get together and um, and reform the barge, or is it just to get together to have a family picnic? What? <laughs> um, I don't think we can reform the barge. The barge is the barge. <laughs> um, just come together as a family, yes. And it used to be my dream that we would um be on stage again together, but now it's it's like um I just want us to come back together as a family. I think everything else will fall behind. Yeah. Well, we have, whenever we come together um, as a family, it's a singing. It's a singing event, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have to find. Yeah, it it is. You know, it is going to take wisdom to find an opportunity for you guys to be able to perform and and to sing, and um, in a way that that you know honors God and 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 edifies every each of each, each of you, because it, it you know when when you know when families it's hard because most of us you know who are not public figures may have our issues within our families, um, but because we're not public figures, it doesn't no one really knows what's going on. We and, and we can it's easy to to put on a brave face and and as if nothing has happened, but when you have grown up in the spotlight for so many years and um, it, it, it is much more difficult to get away with that and even the opportunity to reconcile can be used um, as a stunt, publicity stunt, and so everyone can be very much wary about the mot motives, uh, about the motives and, and things, but, you know, you, if you if you testify about when you testify about how your life has been turned around, you realize nothing can is impossible, um, and so that that's something we can always look out for. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, uh, Bonnie, definitely appreciate the fact that um, we were able to go and uh, go through this. Where can people get volumes one and two of the kept ones? Your 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 topography. You can go to officialbunnydebarge.com. Or you can go to Amazon. If mm -hmm. you want an autograph copy, come to official bunny bunnydebarge.com and I uh send out autograph copies. Okay. Yes. I mean, and as I said, it's it's um it is something it's definitely um a, a, a worth read just to be able to go in detail. I mean, you've kind of summarized a lot of things, but to be able to go into into details and and hopefully that they, they hope is is there hope when people read and hear your story? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> I'm here today because of that. You know, I've been writing my book. I used to cry when I talk about it, but I've got, gotten over it. I've had my last cries. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, it was very therapeutic for me. Um, and those that have read my book, I come all the time. I always hear how they um, say that it was helpful to them. Yeah. Yeah, well, definitely appreciate um, the time um, this and uh, being able to be able to share Thank this. You for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
Um, what I'll do when this goes out is to try and get the link to your book, both the website and on Amazon, so people um can at least have have access to be able to buy and download um down your autobiography. And it, and I think the important thing is hearing you experience and go through something that most of us would never know and experience but being able to come out of it um is an inspiration the fact that anything can happen to any of us at any time and it's not where you've been it's where you end up and instead of letting um pity and, and everything pull you down you're able to um, you're still rising above it and so it would be really um something to be able to continue to listen and support and and pray for the family as well because i guess um on the outside it seems if everyone's doing fine because we see the little videos of you guys gathering but not realizing that it's not done for the cameras but it's not always that straightforward and easy to yeah wow okay well definitely but yeah, i like to leave a ripple effect um and to impact someone's life. Uh, you know, that's what it's all about to me. It's about kingdom work today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ronnie, it's been, it's been a pleasure uh, listening to you. And um, yes, I appreciate, you know. Pleasure how being I, here. Pardon? <laughs> I said it's been a pleasure being here. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, well, definitely, yes. Guys, as you're watching, you know, we're praying for the re reconciliation and, and long term healing within within the family. And uh, it is uh, it is definitely something that um, it will be golden to see. And, uh, you know, it would be lovely to see the barge on stage one day <laughs> singing yeah. their timeless albums and classics and who knows the uh, the tour that we never got back in 80s. 685 we may get that um you know uh, we may get that next, uh, uh, in due time <laughs> yeah. in time wow. we will reveal <laughs> yes time we will reveal i mean you know you when how as a, as the songwriter for a dream and you've seen it being used by Tupac and Black Street and other artists what does that feel like you know a song oh, you wrote so many i am honored and i know that it's but by the grace of god that those songs have gone and stayed around to this day. Mm -hmm. So who knows what God has in plan? Yeah, in store for us. Yes. Do you rem do you always go back to the time when you wrote it and think, man, remember I wrote this and I didn't think much of it, but now look at it, everyone's <laughs> singing it and sampling it and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you go back I'm, to I'm remember? Thinking, oh yeah, especially you know it was on a football halftime. I think it was in twenty two. Beginning of twenty two in the Super Bowl, mm. and they, uh, I was like, "Wow, who would have ever thought?" You know, mm. it's been sampled many times. Yes, yeah. That, Come on. <laughs> have you ever? Do you ever do you, do you, I mean, do you ever decide to get and sing it? You know, a, a, a live version of, of of it with with some of the other songs. Oh, of course, it's my dream to sing it with my brother Al. To come on stage, maybe sneak one day and and show up at one of his shows and just say, <laughs> "Your sister's right here on the side." You have to pay. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's not a dream. <laughs> <Right there. laughs> what What's been your best? What's been your favorite um, sample of it that's been used in a song? Which would I know? There's many. What which has been your favorite? My favorite sample probably would be by Fifth Harmony. The group mm -hmm. called Fifth Harmony. Okay. Yeah, I like the way they did it. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, I think one of the more popular ones was uh, Black Street. And, Black Street, yes. Uh, I like this too. And then yeah. Tupac, I'm not, I Ain't Mad At You. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the two biggest ones. Okay. Those are two, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Um, Da, 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 da. Don't is it? Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Yeah, yeah, but yes. Yeah. It, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't come out as a single, but it it was on the airplane. It's, it's two taxes. I ain't mad at you. Yeah, I ain't mad at you. So yeah, I, mean, I ain't mad at you. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it, it you know, and and that's the that's the um that is the power of um of a good song, the melody and the lyrics and stuff. So um yes, hopefully we can see you, you know, you know, see you guys perform and and and, and share it and, and bless us with that. But um as I said, um don't forget guys if you check out uh the Kep ones. Part one and two are out on official Bunny the uh, Barge um, website or search on Amazon, and um, yes, and and as I said, you know, and then we can follow you on um, on Instagram and Facebook. What's what is your um, you... um Bunny the Barge on Facebook? I have a music page that's Bunny the Barge, and then at Bunny the Barge on Instagram. Okay, on Instagram, yes. So we'll be able to follow and keep up to date and keep track. And we'll keep praying for your mom. A lot of ministry well. on our Facebook pages. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know what? you got to keep looking forward so you don't look back, so you don't get held That's backwards. Right. So, yeah, no no, no one's going to ain't, ain't mad at you. <laughs> if, we, if we sample the track, it ain't mad at you. Uh, right. Yeah, so it's been a journey. It's been great. And um no, definitely appreciate this um, taking the time this evening as well. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're always welcome. Anyway, yeah. so guys, as I said, check out Bonnie and um, we will definitely be keeping in touch with her and probably as when Volume 3 is about to come back out, we'll be able to prom help promote it to understand now that you've finished it, what you know, what you expect from reading it. So that would be an, an awesome, uh, an awesome time as well. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, appreciate it. Take care. Okay. You take care too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of halftime chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of halftime chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that kind of hey, the somewhere in between. Us, or even loving us, on which I didn't miss you. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 sure. But what was it like growing up? It is a still making an impact on four houses down. Hey. I'm not, I have a good this one and that one. Once the just for me. No, 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 okay, you're okay. Yeah. 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 Ye